In this video, we will review the diamond scribing workflow made possible with the SRM20 engraving accessory kit. Now for those of you who are new to the diamond scribing workflow, this is essentially the practice of using a diamond tipped tool like this, which we'll cover more in a moment, uh, to accurately mark uh, letters, graphics, uh, customizations to a variety of materials. So whether this is uh, items like name tags or keepsakes, uh, awards like I showed a moment ago, a customization of metal goods like bottle openers, cufflinks, uh, jewelry, to even more conventional uh, marking like serial serialization of plates, tags, and things like that. So as you can see, uh, there's really a lot that can be done with diamond scribing uh, workflows and this kit has made it easier than ever. So in this video, we will start off at looking the tooling setup, uh, how to load this into the SRM20. We will cover how to load the centering vise and material fixtures into the machine. We will then go into a typical job setup and output through VCarve Desktop to the system. Let's now take a look at the tools used. So in the previous video, uh, we covered rotary engraving workflows where we inserted or included V-bit tooling into our collet and then fixed that into the spindle. In this video, we will follow suit with the other two tools in our SRM20 engraving workflow kit. So on the left here, I have the quarter inch collet on the right, I have the spring-loaded diamond scribe tool, which comes standard with that engraving accessory kit. At this point, I am going to go ahead and just load this into the spindle. All right, I've now gone ahead and installed the diamond scribing tool here and quarter inch collet into the spindle, just hand tight. Uh, you can't see in front of it, but note that I have about an inch of the tool exposed past the collet. Uh, now that will ensure we have enough clearance uh, for our Z travel and over any material that we seek to uh, mark. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up now. 17 millimeter on top. 10 mil on the bottom, and we will just tighten this up. All right, great. So now that we have our tool nice and secure in the spindle, we are ready to load the centering vise fixture and our material. Following along with the engraving accessory kits component, so we should have another a fixture that looks something like this. Now this is designed to be used in conjunction with that indexing fixture already installed in the machine. So if you haven't installed that, go ahead and do so at this point. I'm going to go ahead and load the fixture in like this, and then I'm going to place the fixture on top with our vice clamps uh, going horizontally here. But before I do, uh, take note, if you haven't removed your AS10 release liner, go ahead and pull that up, and we'll get started. All right, one thing to note about this, uh, if you want to flip it and have the vise uh, more centered on the fixture, you can certainly do so. Just note that your origin positions will change with uh, that positioning. I'm going to go ahead and leave it with the vise justified to the front of the machine. The reason being is that it will allow a bit easier access for loading of the vise, the materials, and things like that. So with that loaded, give it some solid pressure so that we have a nice uh, adhesion to the platform. We can then take our centering vise and load this either uh, with the clamps horizontally 
or vertically like so. But in this case, uh, I'll go ahead and leave it like this. That will put the thumb screw right in front here where I need it to be. And we are pretty much ready to load material. For this example, uh, we will be focusing on a custom guitar body plate. So this plate would typically install to the back of a guitar body and uh, this customer, say, wants this customized with something that is unique and individual to them. So we're going to go ahead and load it into this fixture, uh, bring in a custom marking, and then set that up in VCAR for output. Now that we have our tooling and vice loaded, it's now time to take a look at loading material into the machine and setting origins. I'm going to go ahead and start by setting the origins as I feel it's a little bit easier to do so before your actual material is loaded. To get started, uh, the machine is now parked in the view position and I'm going to navigate to the SRM20's V panel and begin jogging the center of that tool to the point right where our uh, vice clamps meet. And to do so, we can use the jog steps. I'm going to lower the z-axis and get our tool basically centered into the points on that clamp that we have outlined here. Once you have things in the really the ballpark like I have on screen, we can then switch our cursor steps on the SRM20V panel to dial this in. All right, so now from what I see here, our diamond scribe tool is centered in the, the direct center of our vise. I'm gonna go ahead and select set origin for the X and Y in V panel. Now that we have our X, Y origin set and our material loaded, uh, let's now go ahead and set the Z origin for the diamond scribing tool. Now to do so, I will navigate to the SRM20's V panel. In that X, Y position, I will lower the tool and you can change your cursor steps right below if need be. Uh, but what we are looking to do is have the SRM or the diamond scribing tool rather, uh, about, about an eighth inch depressed onto the material. So if you can see just the tip of the tool is about to touch the material, we want contact with the material and a slight depression of that spring loaded in the spindle. Uh, now that we have something like that set, we can go ahead and set the Z origin from the V panel. I'll select the set Z origin button, select yes to confirm, and we are good to go. For good measure, I'll go ahead and raise that spindle up. At this point in time, our machine is set up and ready to receive a job. We are now free to move into VCarve Desktop to prepare our file. Now that we've completed the tool setup and material loading for the diamond scribing workflow, it's time to move on to the job setup and output. So a few moments ago, we set up the material, which is a three by two inch chrome plated tag uh, designed for the back of a guitar. We're gonna go ahead and set up a simple rock and roll logo to place on this. Starting in VCarve desktop, I have a new job uh, that I'll prepare here and I will size it to our material, which is three by two by approximately 0.2 inches. We'll say 0.125. I then want to confirm our Z0, which is at the top surface of the material. And on this one, we will be using a center origin uh, to correspond with the origin we set on the SRM20. Once this is all confirmed, we can click OK. Uh, and then we are moving into our artboard here. I'm going to go ahead and file, go to the file menu, and import our vector graphic. I will include 
uh, not only the vcarve desktop file but the source file as well uh, in the description below so look out for that if you'd like to follow along I'll select this bring it in I'm going to group the vectors control G uh, I will scale them down to fit into our material and use the alignment tools to center this up. It's right here. From there, uh, I'll scale this up a little bit larger to fill the space. And that really is it for our material setup. So at this point, I'm happy with my layout, my material setup. I'm going to uh, move on to toolpaths. For this one, uh, I'm going to select the quick engraving toolpath option as we're just looking for a simple uh, fill and stroke around the material here. Select this toolpath and then we can work our way down through the macros here. To start off, we want to make sure that we are using the correct tool. So we have our diamond drag 90 degree loaded here. Note that um, if you'd like to follow along with the tools used, uh, you can download the Roland tool database, which you can then import uh, right here. Alternatively, you can create your own diamond drag tools based on your specs and load them in. Uh, this will also be linked below in the description if you need this uh, tool database for your mill. In any event, everything is all preset, so we just want to select our tool here and we can proceed. Below that, we want to define our pressure or depth. Uh, in this case, if you recall, we set our Z0 on the material surface with about half of that diamond scribe spring uh, depressed into the material. So that really is fine. We don't need to define any extra depth here. I will leave this at zero and we are free to move on. Below that, we have a fill option. Uh, we can either treat this as a stroke in which it will yield uh, ascribing similar to what we have on screen uh, or we can create a fill here and we have some options to do so. Uh, I'm going to go with the fill just because it will create a bit higher contrast, uh, a little more striking and it will stand out on the camera a bit better. Alright, so I will select the hatch. Uh, I like a 45 degree angle here, kind of uh, replicate this preview here and that's pretty much it for our tooling setup. We are now free to move on to selecting our post processor and driver for output to the SRM20. Previously, we'd used the SRM20 post processor to output for our rotary engraving workflow. However, uh, for this one, we are seeking to create a process where we are not rotating the spindle. Uh, no rotation is required for the diamond scribing. So we can go in here and select the Roland SRM20 D drag. And this is a similar post processor. It just has the rotation disabled by default. So it'll make it very easy to uh, switch between workflows by grabbing this pick field item. Below that, we can output directly to the machine. I want that checked. Confirm your driver, and you can either calculate your toolpath or release it directly. This really concludes the job setup portion of the SRM20's dive and scribing workflow. At this point, I'm going to output the file, and then we can take a look at our progress in a moment. Now that the SRM20 has completed the diamond scribing operation, let's take a look at our results. I'm going to select the move to view position on the SRM20V panel, which will advance the bed forward. I will loosen the centering by screw, and Right off the bat, we can see a very nice striking finish between the contours of the letters, uh, the cross-hatching of the fill pattern. Very pleased with the results here. In following along with this video, we hope you've found it informative and useful to begin your own diamond scribing on plates, customized tags, other materials uh, like awards, promotional goods and keepsakes, and many others. If you have any questions on this workflow, feel free to comment below and we will help out when we can.